Whereas access for some children was indeed an issue, the major concern for the ministry was the standard of education obtained in privately run early childhood centers. Because there was nothing in place to sort of have early childhood supervisors being accountable, you had the whole scenario of people beginning early childhood centers all over the place and as you said, traditionally, the operations was based on it was a sort of a little babysitting, as it were, that the early childhood supervisors would be doing. Because there's nothing there that holds them in line to say you've got to raise the bar, you've got to give quality early childhood education, then the quality itself was affected. So you've got children going to schools all around but the quality of service in preschools differ because they did really start on the same level. It all depends on a number of issues. Is the, advan is the area a disadvantaged area? To deal with the quality concerns experienced in some early childhood centers, standards have been established to standardize the operations. These standards are currently awaiting ratification. The education revolution is already making gains within the Vincentian society and changing perceptions and mindsets. As such, today, more and more parents, particularly mothers, have become educated and are now more cognizant of the fact that their children need to be in an environment where they can be stimulated and where learning can take place. To deal with the shortcomings and to meet the demand of discerning parents, as well as to lessen the trauma of preschoolers entering the primary school system, government has set about establishing early childhood centers throughout the state. Establishing these government-run facilities is intended to send the message that private operators cannot operate as usual and it is a means of giving guidelines on how early childhood centers should be run. Nine centers have so far been established in various locations throughout the country. One of them is the Edinburgh Early Childhood Center. Sid Brown is one of the teachers in charge at that center. The school was really open to cater for disadvantaged children. We know the importance of early childhood education and once children are given that head start, then they can do wonders. So that was the primary purpose for opening this. A stimulating environment is provided for the young charges and the staff has a daily schedule that they work with. Our Discovery and Exploration Center, that is really our science center, where the children can go and discover, explore, find out. That's what it's really about, is to give them that opportunity. So there is where we will nurture our little scientists and so on, environmentalists, etc. If you notice what we have in our center. Then our Maths and Manipulative Center, we have things, puzzles and toys and math equipment to um, help them in that field. So there they will get to I, learn, with their, learn about shapes, Center. to learn how things move and all of that. The whole idea is to learn while having fun. That's why we have all of these little things around. So they're playing but yet they're learning. So they might be playing, pushing a, a truck and you might think that's nothing really but there's so many things that they can learn from just pushing that. How things move, um, this, you know, things that are wrong will move and things, things that you would have to push and things that you would have to pull, all of that. So it's really, they're learning while having fun. Our language center, that is really our book area and it is really our quiet zone. We have our library components where they go. If you notice, it, it has a little cushion and they can sit and relax and learn. They learn about books, they learn about the cover, they learn that their books have pictures and they have words, they tell us a story. All of that, which is going to help them in their primary and secondary education and even beyond. Our dramatic centre, well we know when children play and they pretend the possibilities are endless. 
So they, 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 can, they role play the doctor, the role play the nurse, the farmer, and all of that. And they, in that area, they're really building career, making career choices, you know, as small, as little as they are. Because they would know, I want to be a shopkeeper, or I like the idea of being a nurse, because they get to do all of those things. In, in that. So the possibilities are endless while playing in the dramatic center. Our music center, same thing. We get to, at a very early age, expose them to different musical instruments, some of which we make ourselves. So it's not, we have the indigenous aspect of it. So you will notice that we have some of our instruments, we make them ourselves so the children can identify with that. They know that these instruments provide songs and all of that. They develop rhythm pattern, all of which will help them in their learning. And you might wonder, how come such a facility is free? And I, our major challenge is that parents, they are not capitalizing on it. And the children, some of them, they don't come to school. We have a school feeding program. We provide good meals. If you notice the snack, we encourage healthy snacking and healthy eating. So I think that is our major challenge, getting parents to understand the importance of early childhood education. This center at Edinburgh is the only standalone. All of the others are attached to primary schools. So we have, we have a daily schedule that we work with. And if you look, at, look on it, it's there in the corner. And most of it, the emphasis is on play. So they have free play, they have guided play. So there are times when they will just go to the center and choose whatever they want to play with. Several methods are employed in the ministry's effort to stimulate the minds and the imaginations of the children. They have gone into the primary school and they're saying, we want to ensure continuity in terms of the education that is started. Simultaneously, efforts are being made to bring private operators on stream and up to required standards. Teacher training is a major part of the education revolution, and this is no less the case in the early childhood department. So they have come on board because they realize that we're all working together in the interests of the children. Research has suggested that there are new areas of learning and new strategies for teaching young children. And Cambridge is confident in the young children's ability to learn. Government intends to complete universal access to early childhood education with the construction of nine more early childhood centers. Regular workshops are also held, teaching early childhood operators various strategies on how they can engage their children. In government-run centers, government has engaged teachers specially trained in early childhood education. The government-run centers, which are attached to primary schools, are under the responsibility of primary school principals, and there's a heavy focus on meeting the nutritional needs and the development of the children, with lunches being provided free of cost. Dr. Warrican sees the focus on early childhood education as a crucial step, having the ability to prevent challenges in the system before they actually occur. When you have children who cannot read, it costs a lot of money to implement programs. When you have to go out into the community and do outreach programs like the Literacy Crusade, it costs a lot of money. The way to to, to cut back on that spending down the years is to get it right in the early grades. If you get it early, right, preschool and kindergarten, by grade one, it is smoother. By grade two, it is even smoother. And by grade three, the children are blossoming and ready to move into middle primary school and upper primary school, ready to take on the world. So you've got to get it right early. So having implemented universal secondary education, I think the Ministry of Education recognized that, yes, we have this great achievement, this great accomplishment, but the problems we are seeing in the secondary school, they didn't start in the secondary school. They started in the primary school and even before the primary school. So we now have to address that. So that when, in a few years' time, when everybody goes into secondary school, we are going to have 
a cohort that is, is much stronger than the one that went in in 2005 because they would have had all the targeted interventions in the early grades and in the, in the primary school system. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College is a major component of the education revolution. The story of this institution is an interesting one. Previously, what existed were four colleges, the Technical College, the School of Nursing, the Community College, and the Teachers College. Those four colleges were integrated into one entity by an Act of Parliament in 2005. By January of 2008, a board took over control of the combined colleges, known as the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College. With the synergies of all four divisions now merged, the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College held its first integrated graduation at the Victoria Park just this year. Since the revolution, there have been tremendous increases in enrollment at the Division of Arts, Sciences and General Studies and the Division of Technical Vocational Education. Today, enrollment at the Division of Technical Vocation Education have tripled as the college itself revolutionizes the delivery of tech voc education from what it traditionally was. Historically, it has been where um, persons who want people to go into industry basically got somebody who um, are already in, in industry and engage them as an apprentice where they would learn a particular trade or vocation and uh, um, that is where this idea of technical or vocational education developed from traditionally or historically but um, within recent time what we what what has emerged is what we now call technical vocational education and training which combines two important elements education and training Osborne Boynes is the dean in charge of the Technical College and he sees tech voc education as clearly having its place in the education revolution. The college offers an interesting array of programs that meet the needs of many students coming out from secondary schools. Students can take courses in areas such as agricultural science, auto repairs, refrigeration and air conditioning technology, ICT, business, mechanical technology, hospitality, and microcomputer repairs, to name a few. 
the auto technician's repair course is very popular among students. These days, you do not want to just know that you have a mechanic that has some practical knowledge, but it should be a mechanic that can go and do some research on the new and modern type of vehicles that are coming out and be able to um, use his practical knowledge and combine it with the theory to give you the best service for your vehicle. Auto Technician's Repair was once housed in a small room to the back of this mechanical workshop. Today, students have comfortable facilities in this building, which was commissioned in 2004 as part of the provisions of the Education Revolution. This building houses classrooms for theoretical training and practical areas where students work with sophisticated equipment like engine analyzers and wheel alignment machines. So what's happening here? Well, right now we're basically reassembling this engine. We took it down and we reassembling it. We put it in the crankshaft, we put it in all the bearings for the pistons and for the other things that are going to hold on this crankshaft. Here. So what, what are your plans for the future? Are you planning on pursuing a career in this year? Yeah, hopefully um, next year I would get the opportunity to go to UTI. It's a universal technical institute in America where they do automotive training. Whether diesel, engines, you could specialize in a, a make a vehicle. If you want to work for Mazda, you work for BMW, uh, whoever else you want to work for is they give you the qualifications necessary to go out and work for these companies so you are a specialist. A second year student here at the Technical College doing automotive repair. And tell me about those plans, future plans. Well, for the future I'm planning to go to Lincoln Tech. It's a very good university overseas where, where I could further my studies in automotive repair which I have a love for. We are here now trying to assemble the crankshaft into the block here. This is my love. I have a love for this. This is a uh, drum brakes, back brakes. So we are going to adjust it. So we are adjusting it from outside. So we put it on the drum. Which are... With registration having tripled in recent years, it is fair to say that the college is bursting at its seams with ambitious young students working towards their career goals for the future. Um, okay, um, what she just did, she connected a wire from the battery to the um, fuse. And then and from, from the fuse, we go to, to the switch. switch. And the reason why um, she connected from the arm but to the fuse is because the fuse is a protective device so that if there is any shot the arm fuse will cut out the socket to um, prevent any damages, further damages. I see. Okay. And then from the horn it goes to the battery and then the horn works. Wow. Excellent. The passion displayed by the automotive students is evident. I think um, a couple of years ago, like 10 years ago or even five years ago, um, a parent might not have perceived that a child that has eight CXCs or CSEC passes might not have wanted your child to come to the technical division. But more and more we're seeing where persons are um, accessing good CSEC results and are having as a first option the technical college or the technical division and this is an this is indicative of the change in perception that is taking place um, the truth is that the the results of um, the enrollment has shown that we have had significant increases in the enrollment over the last let's say um, five to ten years especially since 2005 um, for example, if I give you the figures, like in 2001, we had a total enrollment of some 269. Today, um, the enrollment for 2010 is 924, which um, you could say is 
three times that of um, the 2001 figure. And it has been a steady rise over the years. For example, in, in 2007, um, it went to 314, 409 in 2008, 763 in 2009. And in this, the total enrollment, as I indicated for 2010, is 924. And as I indicated, it is where um, we are, in fact, attracting, which is a good thing, some of the students who are doing excellent in their CSEC exam, an indication that parents, students, and the general public are seeing technical vocational education um, differently in, the recent, in recent years.